that would drive climate action at the local level. I hope everyone in the audience is as amped and energized as we are, right Yasir? Up next is the very exciting panel discussion on the experiences of local private sector on building resilience to a changing climate. Thank you, Aisha. First we have um, uh, Ahmed Shifaz, the Ms. Ahmed Shifaz, who is the Assistant Resident Representative um, Resilience and Climate Change at UNDP, who will speak to us on key role of private sector can play uh, in catalyzing climate action and how partnerships between private sector and the youth is vital to creating sustainable climate action. Shifaz, the floor is yours. Thank you, Yasir. Um, a very warm welcome to everyone to the third and last panel discussion for today. Uh, as Yasir mentioned, my name is Ahmad Shifaz and I'm from UNDP Recording Maldives. Recording in progress. Okay. <laughs> Innovation right there for you. And I will be your moderator for this um, panel. Um, first of all, a very special thanks to our distinguished panel uh, for ex accepting our invitation and joining us here today. Uh, to talk about mobilizing private sector as a catalyst to advance climate action in the Maldives. Um, how, by engaging private sector, we can meet the ambitious target um, by understanding um, what they are currently doing and how to scale this through further collaboration. And um, just to set um, the um, overall objective through our discussions, we hope to establish whether private sector has a role to play in catalyzing cl climate action and how this can be done, understanding the various actions taken by the private sector in the Maldives, and finding opportunity to scale these through different avenues such as public and private sector partnerships, and focusing on sharing of know-how, um, technology exchanges and financing all while placing young people and children at the heart of the climate agenda um, as a means to meeting our ambitious climate targets. So to begin with, uh, I'd like to invite our panelists to give a very brief introduction about themselves and the organization they represent, starting off with um, Falak. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Mariam Falak Ahmed. I currently work at Udidu Maldives as the assistant manager brand. My responsibilities mainly include uh, handling CSR, sponsorship, and partnerships. So Uridu Maldives is actually a part of a Uridu group, an international telecommunication company that's around and in around 10 countries around the world. So as a community-focused company, we are actually guided by our vision that our services can enrich people's lives. We believe that the power of mobile technology as an enabler to bring about social change in the world. Thank you. Thank you. Firag? Yeah, uh, my name is uh, Abda Farag. I'm working uh, Dirag uh, as a uh, director of networks. I'm looking after uh, technical infrastructure, most of the technical infrastructure of Dirag. Uh, uh, so uh, I think everybody knows uh, about uh, we are providing telecom, uh, telecom services, uh, basically digital service throughout the country. We have uh, 2G, 3G, and 4G uh, throughout the, net, uh, throughout the uh, country and uh, FTTH or fixed broadband service uh, to 80 uh, percent of our uh, households now uh, providing. So I think, uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Ibrahim Nashid and I represent uh, a company called Renewable Energy Private Limited. Uh, <coughs> we would like to say we're the only company in the Maldives that got renewable energy solution providing as our only sole concern of the company. And, and that's our aim, and that's, we started in 2007 as a company, as a private concern, trying to reduce the import of diesel in the Maldives. From there on, so we're doing, we're in all areas of renewable energy in the Maldives, and particularly solar power at the moment, but uh, we're looking into various technologies, and that's the work we're doing at the moment, and it's very exciting to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Fires? My name is, <coughs> sorry. My name is Fayyaz Ibrahim, and I represent a dive center, which I operate, which we operate to teach locals and everyone who comes to become divers, and from the first dive to the professional level. And it's always our concern the 
environment. So we've been, since we established in two, so 2003, and uh, we have been doing a lot of work with the schools to get in the environment clubs, uh, showing the kids the changes that come, and then also taking part in all national wide programs, which happens, uh, uh, comes around. So that's what we do, and I, uh, we always believe that by showing them and by creating awareness is the uh, best way to make things happen. Thank you. Thank you, Fayez. And we do have one more panelist joining us online, um, just to double check. Kesh, can you hear us? I am here. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can, go ahead. Um, good afternoon and thank you for, uh, for having me. My name is Cash and I am the director of Soneva Namuna Operations and Community Engagement for Soneva. Uh, as you may know, Soneva um, has two resorts here in the Maldives, Soneva Pushi and Soneva Jani. And like um, many other um, private companies, we have a CSR component. So through our CSR component, we've been working with many uh, communities in uh, neighboring islands to Soneva resorts. And the thing that Soneva has done uh, a little bit differently is we've taken our CSR component to the next level and we've strategized the kind of impact we uh, wish to have, focusing on um, this kind of environmental conscience philosophy um, and the three components of re recycle, reduce and inspire. And we've set up an NGO. So now uh, Soneva Namuna is an NGO that we have, which is a separate entity, which not only allows Soneva resorts to provide funding for activities, but also allows us then to apply for further funding from other agencies so that we can um, expand our impact. So thank you very much. Thank you, Cash, for joining us. And thank you all, uh, to all the panelists um, for taking the time to be here with us today. Um, before we get started, just for the information of the audience, the panel will be carried out over two rounds of questions. Uh, followed by a, a brief re recap um, and, and wrap up. We'll try and get to audience questions, time permitting, and we hope to be able to do that. So we have a lot to cover in a short amount of time, and with that, I would like to dive right into the first round of questions. Um, starting off with Falak. Social innovation can be a powerful tool in finding solutions for pressing social and environmental issues. Uridu has been working with UNDP for several years on a program called Miaheli. It's a social innovation camp. Um, can you tell us a bit about this and other work that you do with youth community groups and partners on climate action and other social issues? Um, Miaheli actually, where we started in 2016, we have been partnering with UNDP till since 2016 for Miaheli which is a social innovation camp. And the main aim of this program is to empower youth to find solutions for issues within the society. And each year we focus on different thematic areas and through them there's also climate change and climate action. So we last year we actually ha held it virtually for the first time, but we've been able to have it continuously every year. So I think that's a really <laughs> Good success. And looking at some of the successful programs that we've been able to bring through uh, through Mia Heli, one of them is Binghel. Binghel is actually an urban farming plus farm to table project where anyone who's interested can uh, apply to work for Binghel and then they'll be provided with microgreens and they can become a microgreen farmer on a contract basis. And then being here will buy the produce from them and sell it to other local outlets. So this pr was actually a solution provided by youth as a solution for climate, as well as the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, as many lost their jobs as businesses closed down. So this is just one of the projects that has come out from this. But in addition to that, looking at other work that we've been doing for youth, I would include uh, other projects we've been working with UNDP, such as Smart Cities, which we've worked on with HDC as well. And through that, we've been creating awareness on how uh, to create wa waste to wealth and different programs through that in 
it's in Hulumale specifically as a smart city. And I'd also like to note that Uridu Maldives is the first company in the Maldives to introduce modern single radio access network equipment. So through this, we were able to save 54% of our electricity consumption and 80% of our carbon footprint. Thank you for that. Um, next question um, to Dr. Nashid. Um, can you tell us a bit about the renewable energy landscape in the Maldives and your work experience as a private sector renewable energy service provider? How do you see the scope for young people in this sector? Uh, <coughs> it started, yeah, when we joined in, we started around, say I started in this about 94, 92, around that time. And, and now it has gone on. It, it was a slow start, and then in 2000 it became uh, you know, a bit faster. And now it's a very, very good time, I think, particularly for the young people, and particularly for the young people in the Maldives. It's something very, like for, for example, solar power, solar energy. The way we have been doing installations is we're not going with a big uh, workforce to all the islands. When we do, even when we have to say 500 kilowatts recently we installed, and we, we, we go to the island and we can take the young uh, people there and train them. Yeah, it's a very simple installation. Or the only basic requirement is be safe on a roof. If you can, if you, and if you're uh, you know, agile enough to walk along, we have harnesses and everything. But so that's the main thing. And the rest is plug and play. And, and the, the, the electrical network in the connections, we would teach, or we do them. They can observe or they can train them. And it has got to the stage that we were able to ring them up and go on the video and say, look, can you do this? And now it's very easy. We don't need to be there. You have all, you, all of you have video uh, connections and everything. And there are very other exciting jobs that are going to come up yeah, in, in renewables and, and the environment. But the main thing, I think, what we have to get to is it's going, the renewable energy is going to be very prominent in the Maldives. And it's going to, whether people like it or not, it's going to happen. And, and it's going to happen at a very fast speed, I think. And, and there is, what you have to do is, I think, everybody becoming energy aware is, is what is important. Is often what we have is, uh, I can't do it on my own. If, I mean, there's nothing I can do really is, is the, the thing that we got and very often we, we face that, yeah. But it's the, the I that throw the bottle, it's just I throw only one bottle and a collection becomes uh, a big, you know, waste dump. So individually there is a lot you can do by becoming self-aware of what you're doing to, uh, to the environment. And, and that takes along to all the other jobs and things that are there. There's plenty of exciting jobs in waste management, there's plenty of in uh, tr see, tr uh, renewable energy transport is going to come. That hasn't happened here yet, but it's going to come soon. So there is a lot of excitement, I feel, and it has taken off, and now we're just at the runway, you know, speeding up, I feel. So it's a good time to be young at the moment, yeah. Excellent. Future um, operators in audience, hopefully. Thank you. Um, um, Firag, Dirag, has had a key focus on climate action initiatives within the company. Um, can you tell us a little bit about some of the work that you do? Yeah, uh, I think uh, Dirag actually has, uh, uh, I mean, uh, when we roll out the network, uh, we have uh, stations in every single island. So that means uh, we are one of the key energy users in the islands as well, maybe two or third, uh, including, I think, uh, uh, Uridu as well. So it has been uh, our concern as well. Uh, so. During the past uh, 10 years, uh, we have started actually energy efficiency program. One is actually, in each island we have a, 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 our equipment room built, like 12 foot, 12 foot and air condition, that consumes a lot of energy. And uh, now we have, uh, we come around that, uh, we move most of the equipments outside, so that's suitable for the ambient temperature. Cooling is reduced and uh, we can manage most of the locations by having just uh, an outdoor uh, 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 cabinet. So that means that uh, saves about 30 to 40 percent of our energy consumption in that uh, specific island. Uh, so that's one uh, in, in terms of uh, energy uh, uh, efficiency. Uh, equipments we have replaced, uh, to that's more efficient than uh, uh, before. 
and uh, this uh, movement of our equipment to the more outdoor uh, areas. And other one that uh, I want to highlight is uh, once the efficiency program is done, uh, we are actually uh, keeping up with the renewable as well. We have currently rolled out uh, our renewable solar, actually solar photovoltaic to 20 of our islands. So that means uh, now about 15% of our of Male power consumption is met by this uh, uh, solar, uh, solar energy. So that's our plan. Uh, currently, uh, we are planning another, another 15 islands. So hopefully, we will uh, try to, our strategy is actually roll out this uh, uh, solar PV to most of our uh, locations in the sites. So hopefully, most of the energy will come from uh, solar for this, uh, for this islands. And one thing uh, I'd like to note is that uh, in these uh, 20 islands we have installed, we are meeting this uh, net metering policy as well. So we are following the guideline that's uh, in place from the uh, ministry. Uh, basically, if there's an excess, we be able to feed to the grid and uh, take the advantage of the, that benefit as well. I think uh, it would be good, I think, for other companies like us to uh, take that in, uh, initiative and uh, move forward. And one thing I just want to highlight uh, for the young uh, uh, people here is that with all these projects, we are working with a young, uh, young crowd uh, doing the installation, as Dr. Najib has mentioned. This doesn't require uh, very high expertise. A uh, 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 team is, a uh, lot of young people are working with us uh, in this, uh, 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 these projects to do the installation, uh, to do other works. So that will provide good uh, skills for them. Thank you. So the future of energy is renewable. And uh, our colleagues here are leading the charge. Um, Fayez, next question for you. As a dive center operator and a career diver, um, you've seen firsthand the impacts of uh, climate change, warming oceans on our coral reefs and underwater ecosystems. Um, I know this is a subject that is very near and dear to your heart, so instilling awareness and a love for nature is an essential part of creating environmentally conscious youth and young people. Um, can you tell us a little bit uh, about your work in this area? and some of the things that you've initiated. Thank you. Um, as, we, as we can see in the Maldives, we have the reefs which protects our islands, gives us food, and also it's a means of making our uh, livelihood by getting, um, uh, how do you say, tourists come and see the place. So we have, we have, uh, it's, we have to protect the place anyway. So the thing is, many people don't see it, and then it's just some of us who see it every day, we realize it. And the, the only reason which I think is because people don't go much, they don't see it, and then they don't realize the uh, things that are happening, uh, impact on that. So our aim has been to show the reefs what's happening there, to the, uh, especially to the younger pe generation which is coming up, so that they will work on protecting it. Because we have the changes that come or the uh, uh, damage that comes us, much of is actually can be controlled by us. But there are things which we cannot control, like the global warming, which we can always speak about it. But the thing is, like pollution and other things, which we can prevent. Also, when we get the younger generation uh, to know about it, they would sit in decision-making levels one day and make better decisions than now because there are so much of the reef which is being destroyed because of our action. So what we do is we invite the schools, school uh, environment clubs, we bring them over, we just don't take them snorkeling, but we do a program where we give, make an awareness pro uh, talk first and then show what's happening. And where we work, we link the reef is one of the best reefs to show that because that's the easiest accessible reef from Male and everybody goes there. On a Friday you can see, uh, when we go, we can see people taking octopus. They even use bleach. You can't say anything about it. And then uh, there are people walking on the reef. And then also uh, so many things happening there. So we need to do that and that's what we do. And we launch, a, uh, we help the Ministry of Education with the program called Farukwe, which all of 2018, which we were taking school kids and showing the reef and helping them out to create the awareness program. Thank you. Thank you, Fayez. I think my son, who's 12 years old, started with Farukoi and he got so interested. Uh, he got certified as an open water diver by our master diver here. So <laughs> there, there, there's more you can do. Thank you. 
Um, Kesh, uh, last question for you on this round. So Neva Namuna um, has been one of the leading private sector backed NGOs working to mainstream sustainability into the tourism sector. And more recently, you have started uh, working with young people and schools. Um, can you tell us a bit about your work with Saneva Namuna, and especially the Fahim Adarsa program? Kesh? Sure, thank you. Um, yes, so with Saneva Namuna, um, we are focusing on three components to reduce the amount of single-use plastics being used on, on islands by providing alternatives. Uh, with Recycle to provide and establish more sustainable ways of waste management. And like uh, Dr. Nasheed said, there are ex very exciting things happening with, with waste management in the Maldives. And this, these will be very exciting jobs for young people in the future. Um, and our third component, which is the one that I will focus on today, is Inspire. And Inspire is all about uh, nurturing a generation of ocean stewards. And it's very much connected to what Mr. Fayaz was, was speaking about, uh, about exposing young people to what is happening beneath the waters so that uh, they can start to understand and care about what's happening. And then hopefully action will follow. So Soleva has been uh, for many years now organizing Learn to Swim programs, and we've been doing eco camps uh, in the past. And more recently, we have also uh, on the local islands where we work, um, helped uh, to uh, fund for the training of 17 swimming instructors. So that's been something fantastic on the local island level to build capacity so swimming lessons can happen uh, there without having to uh, bring people from outside. And uh, the latest project that we're working on is together with the Ministry of Education. We partnered up with uh, the Ministry of Education to work on a framework called Fehi Madarusa, which means green school, of course. And it's about uh, making schools more sustainable and more environmentally friendly. There are three aims. Uh, the first is to reduce the ecological footprint of schools, and that's to reduce waste. And we focus on the way that um, school manages and handles its waste. Uh, the next is to increase eco-literacy. And we do that through various activities that build relationships between the community of the school and the island and the ocean. And last, uh, the aim of Fahima Darusa is to promote climate prosperity to get young people to start thinking about the kind of future that we will have here. There will be changes, changes are coming um, in terms of our economy and the type of jobs that young people uh, need to start getting ready for. Uh, so Fahima Darusa aims to make sure that peop young people are starting to think about these kind of jobs and changes that are coming. Thank you. Thank you, Kesh. Um, that concludes the first round of questions and I think um, with that initial set of interventions, it's clear that per sector, especially our colleagues here, are leading the charge in um, creating awareness as well as opportunities for young people to meaningfully engage on this particular issue and actually bring about change. Um, so before we move on to the next round of questions, um, we'd like to share with you a short video from our youth. Sure. So you? Oh, good. Okay. A <laughs> uh, short video from our youth social entrepreneurship and innovation specialist at UNDP's Youth Collab in our Bangkok Regional Hub, um, who's going to tell us about the Youth Empowerment in Climate Action Platform. Hi, everyone. My name is Din Long Pham, and I'm the Social Entrepreneurship and Innovation Consultant for the UNDP Bangkok Regional Hub, working on topics such as youth social entrepreneurship, innovation, and leadership with Youth Collab, but also meaningful youth engagement and empowerment in climate action with the ACAP, so Youth Empowerment in Climate Action Platform. Before I start, I'd like to congratulate UNDP, UNICEF in Maldives, and the Ministry of Environment climate change and technology for convening this event, our climate, our present, our future. So uh, the YECA platform is convened by UNDP Climate Promise, UNICEF, UNFCCC, RCO Bangkok, British Council, Yongo Movers Program and 2030 Youth Force. And it all started with our observation and interaction with the youth communities, in Asia Pacific that they care, they are aware 
they are concerned about the climate crisis, but they don't know how to start. They might not know what they can do to address the climate issue and maybe don't even feel empowered to do so. While at the same time, there is a huge momentum this year, you know, leading to COP26 with more and more youth inclusion in the NDC submissions and also this big opportunity when it comes to green job. And the objective from that of the platform is four things. The first one is how can we work with youth to move from awareness to action, working with youth who don't know how to start to take climate action at individual, organizational and collective and policy level. And then it's also working with governments, policymakers from a promise to action. So how can they deliver on their increased pledges uh, with their NDCs, so how to work with them so they can also engage youth in their NDC implementation. Then it's about knowledge for action. There is so much thought leadership, climate research, uh, and how to work uh, with them to reach uh, the right youth audiences. And finally, it's about bridging, leveraging resources for action so that youth receive more resources to amplify their climate action, whether it's financing, mentoring, or showcasing opportunities. So when we put together all the conveners of this platform, you can see from one side, we have the UN and non-party organizations who have expertise in climate, who's been working with a broad range of stakeholders, such as governments, donors, uh, private sector, and at the same time, working with youth organizations such as Young Go Movers Program 2030 Youth Force, who've been working with youth uh, and have expertise on youth engagement and empowerment, who work with young people, uh, who know how to speak with youth. So bringing all these conveners together creates a YECAP and a comprehensive youth empowerment solution for young people. And something very important for us was to really gather the insights of youth in the region as we were designing and thinking about Yekla. So we organized this consultation with 300 youth in the region to really understand what are their hopes, their worries, uh, excitements when it comes to climate action in the future, and what are the expectations and requests for Yekla. How can Yekla support them to take further climate action? So we included all the insights for the 300 young people to really draft and create the theory of change of YECAP, which is in three levels. The first one is directly working with young people, uh, with young climate leaders, with young climate entrepreneurs, with young climate uh, advocates, and how to help them build their capacity and amplify the impact. It's working with youth climate networks, building their capacity as well, connecting them together, providing financing solutions as well. And finally, it's working with governments, policy makers. Uh, it's about creating research and knowledge products and also uh, supporting to strengthen the national climate education curricula in the region. So that's a bit the flow of how it works with the ACAP, but you can see it's a journey of climate advocacy from awareness to action uh, with the youth from individual action to collective to more systemic actions. So thank you so much. I hope that uh, you can get involved with the ACAP and the ACAP is ready to support in any way. Thank you so much, everyone, and enjoy the rest of the event. Thank you, Din Long. Uh, that was actually a recorded message, but um, <laughs> be sure to um, express our thanks to him. So quickly moving on to the second round of questions. Um, Firag, if you could get us started on this round. Um, uh, moving to uh, more direct partnerships. Virago has been working closely with UNDP um, for several years. Um, one key project that we have in the pipeline is the Film for Change initiative which is about bringing youth voices on climate action and advocacy through film medium. Um, can, you, can you tell us a little bit about the project? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, Film for Change is uh, uh, targeted to the young, uh, young people. We are doing this project in partnership uh, U, uh, with uh, UNDP. 
And uh, this year, uh, the uh, focus is on uh, expressing their uh, concerns on the climate change of the Maldives, and uh, uh, a medium is basically film. Uh, the idea is actually provide the technical and the uh, technical skills uh, for them, uh, for the young people, to uh, develop these uh, skills so they can make uh, short or medium uh, medium uh, size films uh, using mobile and uh, tablets. And uh, this will provide the opportunity for about uh, 30, uh, or, uh, 30 young people uh, during this year. Uh, we are hoping to continue this uh, partnership with uh, UNDP in coming years as well. And uh, I just uh, want to highlight as well, uh, we have other programs like uh, the RAG Apprentice Program that's targeted to uh, young uh, people who's coming out from school. Uh, uh, we are taking around uh, 15, uh, 15 young people each year uh, so they can work with us on a real field, on a real, uh, real challenge, on the technical, on the all the sites basically, including procurement, financing. Uh, they can work us with for one year or two years, and they can uh, decide to move, uh, move with, with us or go to study. So th that will provide a good opportunity for the young crowd to get the experience uh, to start their careers. And also, just want to highlight uh, another one is uh, we have uh, numerous projects in each year. Uh, we provide, uh, again, opportunities like uh, the solar project that I have mentioned for them to come with us and uh, work with us, uh, again, providing, developing their skills and uh, moving ahead uh, with their careers. So we have several initiatives like this just targeting to our uh, young people here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Firat. And keep an eye out for a call for applications for the Film for Change. Um, next question to Dr. Nashid. Um, what do you see as um, current opportunities and barriers, if any, that exist for young people to engage in the renewable sector? Um, you know, we, we have ambitious targets for um, our um, emission reduction. How do you see the potential impact of renewable energy expansion in the Maldives? And what role could youth play in this expansion? Uh, first thing is, if we, when we move on to renewables, and if we're going to, we're going to start expanding. At the moment, I think there's going to be a five megawatt installation coming up very soon on the, the link road. Uh, near Mali, and we are uh, looking at you know now uh, when we uh, ten years ago the the average order size that we would get is about say twenty thirty kilowatts yeah in one one system now it has sort of moved on to three hundred two hundred uh, range, and we would need a lot of hands on it, and we need small teams, and that 's how how it, w this works and and the the advantage of this is going to be energy is going to be distributed from now on. The, the generation is going to be different. Yeah? The powerhouses are going to be areas that are not going to be cordoned off. They're going to be areas where you can go and have a look, where it's going to be part of your daily life. Yeah? That's how the whole thing has to come out. And that's a change that will be. And, and that is what I mean by when you say, when I mean by becoming energy aware, you're going to produce your own energy. And if you're aware of how much you're going to use, say, if you, if you walk from here without taking the lift, say, go up three floors, then you realize how much energy you really need or how much energy the lift really needs to take you up there. Yeah. So that becomes that involvement. And that is how the, the, the young people are going to be uh, involved in this as well. In, and the other side as well, there's going to be a lot of installations coming around in the Maldives and it's not... We will, at the moment, to do a reasonable size installation, we have to import labor. But this is something so any 16-year-old can do. Yeah, it's not heavy, it's not dirty, and it's, and it's also very good for uh, the Maldives in a sense. I mean, I do accept we're a bit lazy, but, and, and the maintenance is zero. The rainfall does it. So all we really have to do is get the right angle and, and do that work properly. So there's going to be lots of work, and we're talking about floating solar. We're not only, um, my uh, our thinking is not just the solar park on top, but there's the coral garden underneath. So use your imagination, try and sell your powerhouses as coral gardens for five years and then to come and die. And that's what we're looking at. And, and it's going to be now tidal currents and ocean thermal events, and so these are the areas, it's going to be exciting. Just be 
good at physics at school. That's all you really need to be. And, and I think it's go there's going to be a lot of these kinds of jobs. It's not going to be the job that, say, you're going to have it for the next 30 years. It's going to change. And you are going to change with it. A lot of it is going to be able to uh, do from wherever you are. We have our systems all over the Maldives, and I can see every single one on my phone. I don't need to go there. And something happens, the system tells me. That we, do, we can do it that way. We can go about doing other things and they will tell me. We are used to that now, notification. Yeah. So it's going to be, the, the technology is going to adapt to the, your lifestyle. And, and you can adapt to that. So you, together you can they, they, uh, create your profession, create your lifestyle, create your work. It's going to happen. And I think that is it. When people talk about work-life balance, the work is life and life is work. And therefore the balance is what I see. Yeah, so get that into your attitude now and and it would help a lot, I think. I feel, uh, I mean, for me, I would say if I was about another, you know, 20 years younger, it would be very exciting now. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, lots of exciting things coming up in the future. Um, for years. Uh, you, you've told us about some of the work that you've been doing and, you know, inspiring young people. Uh, but what more can be done to increase awareness and exposure uh, for young people? And how do you see your future engagement in this area? Thank you. Uh, when we uh, stopped the work we were doing for the uh, outbreak of COVID, we were actually doing a lot of cleanup work on Willimale Reef, where there was a fishing area where you can see it as uh, like a netting there. So I think in future in the Maldives, if we don't do anything about it, there will be a lot of places like that. So we're going to, st we just started again and we are going to get it over to the islands also to uh, aware, make them aware that it could happen if we don't make a change. So, and then also we have, uh, uh, we do train youth in a program where uh, they can come and be volunteers with us and we do uh, weekly cleanup programs. And then uh, I have invited three leading schools in Mali again to start up a snorkeling program, which is not only snorkeling, but trying to include it in their curriculum and start up with it, which we'll try to, uh, how do you say, expand to the atolls. And also we have a plan in mind where we could make a web of uh, schools in the atolls to get the environment club or some, a team where they could be monitoring the reef throughout the year and start on it and go about it uh, every day, every year, and then we could collect more information on how the reefs are, uh, what, what's happening to the reefs. So more statistics means and more uh, school children being engaged means they will see what's happening and they will come with more ideas on how to protect them. And also we are trying to make a program where the anchoring can be uh, where people anchor the boats more for fishing and other uh, things to make uh, mooring buoys and try to uh, come up with a program where we could uh, inspire or we could uh, make the government and other people to do it with us and we'll be helping out with it. So that's what we have in mind and Maldives can lead the world in environmental change because we have a very unique environment here and we believe the youth are very enthusiastic, enthusiastic and we just have to reach out to them and we want to find ways to reach out to the youth. Thank you. I think, thank you for yes, I think that's, this is one platform. So quick show of hands for the little boys and girls only. <laughs> uh, who, who's been snorkeling? Who, who's, who's gone snorkeling? Anybody? Okay. Who would be interested to go on a snorkeling trip with Fayaz? <laughs> Thank you. So uh, Fayaz, definitely we, we'll have people coming your way. Um, uh, last question to um, Cash. Um, you, you've told us a little bit about um, the work that you're doing and I just wanted to um, uh, learn about what the reception has been for the programs that you're rolling out and how do you see them expanding in the future 
um, giving more for all and bringing more and more youth into the conversation and engaging them in hands-on um, action. Uh, thank you. So, um, the reception for the programs, I think um, there's two different programs. The ones are uh, directly done by Soneva and Soneva, Na Soneva Namuna on the islands that are neighboring to where we have our resorts. And um, the response there and the reception uh, has been very positive. And we believe that that is because uh, we have a presence. We, it's, not an, it's not a matter of investment of time. Uh, sorry, of money only, but it's also an investment of time and it, it is an investment of people and your skill. Uh, so CSR uh, from a company perspective isn't only about uh, providing funds for a certain uh, project, but following up with that project and making sure that all the tools are in place to make sure that it is successful. So the reception that we have with the uh, islands and the island councils that we work with as Soneva Namuna, uh, so far is very positive and promising and we really look forward to working with uh, with more councils and um, developing our projects. In terms of Fehima Darusa, which is the uh, initiative that we have started with the Ministry of uh, Education, we are piloting this uh, program with seven uh, pilot schools around the Maldives and there is very keen interest from teachers and from students. Fehima Darusa is um, a whole school approach. so. There are teachers who will be getting training on how to include these issues of sustainability and environmental conscience into all subjects at all grade levels. Um, Mr. Um, Dr. Nasheed uh, mentioned uh, that right now is the time for students to be in school, and that's 100% correct. Young people need to be in school and be learning what's happening, but very importantly, not only learning and taking in that information, but making those connections with their own lives and what they see around them and doing things about what they are learning. So the second part of Fehima Darusa is not only learning about these, um, this information in the classroom, but it's about whole school activities. So there is a Fehi team at every school, which organizes activities during break time, after school, even changes the concepts that are shown around the campus and is really involved in being a leader within its school community to promote these fehi values, which are all about sustainability and environmental uh, leadership. Um, so at the moment, this is a, a pilot program with seven schools and our hope, and it's a big ambition, uh, is that with positive outcomes from this project, this can become a nationwide uh, initiative where schools from any atoll, uh, any island can sign up for this program and become a fehi madrasa. Um, thank you. Thank you, Kesh. Ambition in the name, Fahima Darusa. Um, Falak, to close us out on the second round. Um, Mia Heli 2021 starts soon, and you know we're we're all excited for it it's this weekend. Actually, um, tell us a little bit about this year's Mia Heli, and how do you see this contributing to uh, you know advancing um, youth participation? <coughs> So uh, this year's Miaheli is actually scheduled for tomorrow. It will start tomorrow in Kaf Tudustu. And this year's theme is on innovation of people, innovation of prosperity, and innovation of the planet. So looking at innovation for the planet, it will focuses mainly on climate actions and different solutions for different social and environmental issues that we face, such as waste management, pollution, and uh, agricultural issues as well. So I think that if we are able to bring the ideas that the youth bring to Miaheli this year to life, I think that would create a really huge impact in society as well. And this year's Miaheli, actually, we had to limit it uh, participation-wise due to the pandemic. We have limited it to Alif Alif, Alif Dal, Kaf and Wawertal. Usually we open it up for the whole country and we hope to do so next year. And we look forward to many of the young participants in our audience also joining in the future years. Thank you, Falak. And I'm a judge on, 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 on Saturday and I'm looking forward to what comes out of it. So with that, that concludes our second round and I'm not sure how we are on time. We've got, okay. <laughs>
two people. Um, and I think we have some time for some questions from the floor. Five minutes. Yeah. Five minutes. So if we could have facilitation for any questions. Hi, I'm Lorna from Grazi School, and I have a question. Uh, how can we mobilize private sector in the Maldives, and how may I take part in it? Thank you for the question, and thank you for being here today. Over to the panel, if, it, if you'd like to take the question. Uh, I mean, mob mobilize the private sector. How can you take part in it? I mean, we have various levels. Yeah, of uh, uh, engagement. I mean, you can be on, on a level of awareness uh, or getting involved or I don't know how you want to arrange it. I mean, internships we do. Uh, we do a bit more than a higher level than internships. You, you can have jobs or part-time or whatever. Yeah, whichever way you want to work around it, whichever island, online, up to you really. Uh, I mean, if we, we haven't so far, uh, I mean, we do conduct various awareness programs and being a small uh, uh, company in the Maldives, it's very costly as well, yeah. But on the other hand, we, the way we do it is the work we do, the, 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 the industry that we are in, in itself is, uh, requires a lot of our work, involvement in it, yeah. So if you want to do it, we have various work, even for our installations, we will take you. Yeah, if you want to come and do an installation, we can let you know when our next installation is. We have one coming up in Daravandu soon or Ungufa. If you want to travel there, we can accommodate. That's also possible. Yeah, so I mean, we, we do. There is an awareness uh, program coming up in uh, Raat or Vadu, which will be quite exciting. It's about... Uh, uh, it's actually a small pro uh, grant project that they uh, did with the GEF funding, and they installed, uh, we installed uh, a solar uh, charging station for an electric bus service in Vadu, and so there's the information day. We have to distribute leaflets and and things, so that would be really good for that for you to get involved. And so I mean, we have various uh, things in. in uh, we don't. Uh, in a way, we don't advertise. You, you won't see us in newspapers that much. I just go around and talk. So, uh, but we, we do have a web page and Instagram and uh, Facebook and things are there. So approach us. I mean, we, are, uh, we respond quickly on, on those. Yeah, so get in touch and, and let us know what you want to do. Yeah. Oh, yes. oh, what we can do is uh, we can all like go through the schools so in the future, we'll make sure that we send our programs to the schools and you could check through your schools and probably they will also uh, put on the notice board. I think as uh, the companies also, they could do the same, which they use. Thank you. I think opportunities out there and it, it depends on, uh, you know, um, your level of engagement, as, as you've said. Um, so you could be engaged on, on just the awareness, you know, you could go a bit further, dive right in with FIAS. You could start an apprenticeship program or you could come up with an innovative solution that you have in mind and channel it through um, one of the social innovation platforms. So opportunities are out there. One more, okay, go ahead. Yeah. I mean, I do have various little projects that we are doing, yeah? <laughs> now that you've mentioned, uh, <laughs> there's the advertising. But <laughs> uh, I have a project that I'm trying to test is what, we c what we're getting now is uh, lightweight solar. Yeah, instead of 20 kilowatts, we've got four, four kilowatts, uh, four, four kilos, sorry. Instead of 20 kilograms, we've got four kilograms. 
So I'm trying to see whether I can, uh, you know, uh, put that on a, a terrace in Male and roll it back up at night time so they can have the night time uh, starry terrace and cover it on that. That's a project that I just haven't got time to do. Material is here, it's on my roof, I just need to connect and, and finish it off and get the readings and, and these things, you know, basically like a demo project. There are these kinds of little projects as well. Now, there are various waste to energy projects we are doing as well as small scale uh, uh, composting ones and you know, worm farms and these kinds of things. So get in touch with us. Yeah. Dr. Nash is looking for volunteers. <laughs> Um, any any questions? Any other questions before we conclude? I'm being shown a red card here. I think I'm running over time. <laughs> so, um, just to conclude, um, you know, a, a quick recap of some of our discussions, if I may. Um, and we've heard from our distinguished panelists that there is a lot of work that has already been done um, in partnership with the private sector. But at the same time, there's also room for us to do a lot more. Um, increasing advocacy programs such as Farukoy and Fahim Adarza, um, and increasing opportunities and platforms for young people to express their opinions, concerns, um, through tools such as Film for Change and Mia Heli coming up with solutions by yourself uh, for problems in your own communities. And um, you know, increasing investment on preparing young people for the future of work um, in the field of renewable energy and occupations that are linked to climate action. Um, so to conclude, I think that was a lot to cover in a, in a short period of time. Um, and I hope that our audience here and online were able to benefit um, from, from the expertise of our distinguished panel here. In closing, uh, and on behalf of UNDP and the, and the organizers, I'd like to once again thank the panelists for taking the time um, out of their extremely busy, busy schedules to be with us here and share your um, thoughts and experiences um, with, with the audience. So with that, um, that concludes the panel, and thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Shifaz, and thank you, panelists. This was quite exciting. I'm sure we'll have a lot of takers um, to join the, the trips, <laughs> snorkeling, as well as to learn uh, renewable energy, more about renewable energy. Um, UNICEF actually did a U report, so just wanted to give you some, uh, some insights from it. So the report run by UNICEF on climate change and education uh, found that young people are very hungry to learn about climate change and to take action to basically uh, overcome uh, the effects of climate change. And 92% of young people in the Maldives surprisingly have said that they are very keen, not surprisingly, but 92% of young people are very keen to actually learn more about climate change and to address the effects of climate change. So we do know this is a great opportunity for young people to actually learn more. So if you have programs to engage them, please do. Uh, use all social media as possible because we have all the young people on social media right now. So we definitely have the right moment to, uh, to strike the iron. Yeah, sir, this has been quite the journey, hasn't it? We have had three very exciting panel discussions, and now we are sadly at the end of this event. Abra Nordin, uh, UNICEF representative of the Maldives, Ms. Majah